want to be the first to shimmy on stage. <laughs> Just take this in for a moment. Now, if you'd been with me just two weeks ago, you would have been sat in a big French country kitchen with a massive table, and you would have been sat with me, my business coach, Andrew, and my team. You see, I fly my team over to France, where I live, every six weeks so that we can work on the next strategy. When I launched this business, How to Build a Brand, I had a big vision. Who here has got a big vision? Right? I knew that I was building the world's largest and most valuable brand building resource for entrepreneurs of fast growth businesses. That was going to take a lot of work. But when you start on day one, you've just got to decide who you are and how you're going to show up, which meant that all I had to do was think feel, live, sleep, eat, breathe, walk, and talk like a resource. Does that make sense? Yeah. It only takes one person to create a community, and then you're on your way. So we're sat there, we're having this conversation, what are we going to do for the next six weeks? How are we going to make the best impact for our customers over the next six weeks? What differences are we going to make? What can we improve? What can we do? And my dad comes walking into the kitchen, and Andrew, my coach, says, hey, Martin, I've got a question for you. And he's sitting there with his pad. What does your daughter do for a living? Whoa, have any of you actually asked your parents to explain what you do for a living? I'm thinking, oh, I don't know what's coming. <laughs> so... My dad, who's six foot two, is a gentle giant, just one of my best friends. I'm very lucky. He, um, he turns around and he says, are you sure you want me to tell you what I really think she does? And I, now I'm thinking, oh, I really don't know what's coming now. And he said, well, Andrew, I think that Sammy helps people to bullshit for a living. Now, I'm chuckling because I know what's behind that. I said, Dad, stop pissing around. Tell him. Tell him why you think that. So he goes on to explain about these big brands and how they treat people, what they stand for, and how he's had really bad, genuine customer experiences from brands that he's bought from. Raise your hand if you've ever had a bad experience from a brand that you thought you could trust in, right? So he's coming from that place. And that's what brand is. Your brand is what other people say about you when you're not there. So he's built up this huge uh, thing in his head about what brands and branding actually stands for. So we go into this huge conversation. It was a brilliant debate, actually, very insightful. And I, and I start sharing what I actually do. And he walks up to Andrew about two hours after while we're in the middle of a break, and he said, Martin, I, I, you know, I... I I think I've got it. I think I've got it. He said, Sammy is the brand bullshit detector. Oh. She goes in, she gets all of the bullshit out of the way and naturally dives down into who they are, what they do and why they do it. And only then does she think about the branding. Because you see, your branding, the logo, is just a trust mark. Your brand is trust. So if you think about it as an iceberg, the branding is the tiny little bit that you see. It's only responsible for 15% of why someone buys from you. Your brand is the bit that they can't see. It's completely intangible, but it's every reason why they buy from you, and it's responsible for 85% of why someone buys from you. It's so big, in fact, that if you think about it from a point of view of trust, creates credibility. Credibility creates customers. Customers create cash flow. Cash flow create a business. And then you've got a business rather than a busy mess. <laughs> so it's important that you think about where your brand is going to land. And I'm not even talking about a logo yet. 
You see, one of the things that I've learned most in the, I've built six companies, I sold my last business in 2013 to launch this. I decided that exchanging time for money was a really restrictive model because who would agree with me there's only a certain amount of hours in the day that you can actually sell, yes or no? So to be able to exchange that knowledge one-to-one many times was something that I really wanted to do. And out of the the five businesses that I've created leading up to the the sixth company that I sold, there were five things that I really, really learned about brand. You see, I've been a branding expert, the branding, and I hadn't realized what I'd really done was create a brand. And that's the biggest part of what you want to do. And it would be completely unnatural for me not to give you a system today, would it not? So (laughs) what I want to do, though, is recognize that leaders, real genuine leaders, are the ones that look at what other people are doing and do the opposite. Yes or no? So that's why you are good at what you do. That's why you're great at what you do, because you see what's missing. You see what's missing and you create intelligent solutions to be able to help those people and you build your brand in doing so. So we're going to take the word brand, but we're going to write it backwards. (laughs) And what you'll find as you start to write the word brand down the page from the top to the bottom, that the first three letters spell DNA. And that is because your brand is the DNA of your business. And so many people are starting from the wrong place. They're starting with the badge. And actually, what you need to start with is the end in mind. Yeah? You need to start with the customer experience. You need to start with how you're going to deliver on your promises. Because your brand is what other people say when you are not there. And if, you, like my dad, he connected people not delivering on their promises with brand as opposed to people delivering on their promises. And would you agree there's a lot of people out there that are getting badly served, overcharged, underserviced, massively underdelivered, underwhelmed, and they're now broken, broken as a result of your competitor being out there because you didn't stand up right now. So it's not just your right to go and claim this leadership in what you do. It's your duty. And you can make a decision right now about changing what your brand stands for. You see, if I go back to when I was just five years old, you'd have seen me stood in the playground on my first day of school, humming all this energy, all these kids' giggles, you know, that really infectious giggle. You've got like times that by a hundred, and there's all these children laughing in the playground. And uh, Trish was talking about playing the skipping rope. Who played hopscotch? Yeah? And there's all this fun going on, but it wasn't fun for me because every group that I went to go and play with totally rejected me because I was the fat kid. Go play somewhere else, you're too fat. Fat so. All the names that come with that. I'd been branded. I'd been labelled. Who's labelling you? Because if you don't take control of that label, you are leaving money on the table. If you're not taking control of your reputation and your brand, someone else is going to. So are those people that are out there that you want to influence most, are they talking about you consistently, about your customer experience and the customer journey? So here are the five things going backwards, okay? So we've talked about deliver. Do you deliver on your promises? If you haven't thought about that yet, think about if you were your ideal customer, how would you want to be treated? How would you want someone to deliver to you in a way that no one else is doing it? How are you nurturing those customers in a way that they don't just spend money with you once they come back and spend money with you for a lifetime because you chose to serve rather than sell? How are you going to attract those customers? 
have you, raise your hand if you know of marketing touch points. Have you heard of marketing touch points? What about if you called them brand heartbeats instead of touch points? It turns it from transactional to relational. And when you start to get out of that DNA and you start to think about what that R means, most people think that's reputation, but you can't have reputation until you relate, until you connect. So think about how you are relating to your customers. And finally, that's when you get to the badge. How are you branding yourself? Is the badge of honor your trust mark really representative of what people are going to find underneath? Because as a branding expert, I tell most people not to rebrand or not to change what they've got. If it really stands for something, it might be that it just needs to change a couple of shades of color, that the values you stand for just need to shift up a gear. But remember, you must always think about where your brand is going to land. Where is your brand of today going to land in 10 years from now? Are you creating a legacy? Are you building a personal brand? Are you building a business brand? Are you building both? You may be building four or five brands at the same time and you don't know it. But if you don't know it, it's going to massively suffocate your business as you grow. So I want to leave you with just one thing now. Because I used to say, if you're not leading, you're losing. What I say now is, if you're not leading, somebody else is losing. It's been my pleasure to serve you. Thank you so much. Yeah.